second year of yacht. For the last two years, a peasant farmer's son from a small village near Pamplona in Spain has launched himself into the world sporting limelight by winning cycling's grandest prize. And with the Tour de France again approaching, the talk once more is of Miguel Indurain. In the first of a three-part series on cycling's greats, we meet the man already being called Spain's greatest ever sportsman. The pattern has been reminiscent of the last two seasons. A quiet start and then suddenly peaking when it matters most. Last week, this 29-year-old cycling genius captured his second success of Giro d'Italia and will shortly bid to become the first man since the legendary Eddie Merckx more than 20 years ago to win three successive tours. His friends point to an extraordinary dedication as the reason behind Indurain's success. Well, you can't live in the same way as other people. You have to look after yourself. You have to watch your diet and train a lot. So yes, you lose contact with the real world, because your life is very different from that of a normal person. You travel a lot and spend a lot of time in hotels. You sacrifice a lot. So you don't live a normal life. There are both pros and cons. Miguel Indurain grew up in the small village of Viava in northern Spain with his parents and younger brother Prudencio. For his 10th birthday, his parents bought him a very heavy bicycle on which he won his first prize, a sandwich and a soft drink. His sports included 400 meters and distance running and the javelin, although most of the trophies at the family home were from cycling. And it was as a cyclist that he was to excel and become first the hero of his local community and then all of Spain. A leading dietitian once observed of Indurain that if he cut his weight from over 13 stone by about 12 pounds, then it could make the difference between a good cyclist and a champion. He did, and promptly won the Paris-Nice stage race in the spring of 1989, a victory he repeated in 1990. Eventually, he took over as number one in the Banesto team from his hero, Pedro Delgado. He and Machine were now one. Well, it's true that I like the bicycle. You spend a lot of time on it, sometimes you even talk to the bike, because you're always in contact with it, and your success depends on it. But to call it a work of art is over the top. There are many beautiful works of art, but a bike is a tool of the trade that makes you suffer. Indurain was already a recognized climber going into the tour two years ago. And on one unforgettable day on the climb to Val Laurent, he was to accede to the throne of other Spanish mountain kings, Barmontes, Ocaña and Delgado. It was the day that reigning champion Greg LeMond lost his title after a fall, and the tour found a new hero. While the rest struggled behind, Indurain and Italy's Claudio Chiapucci attacked the grueling final climb. Chiapucci won the stage, but Indurain took the leader's yellow jersey for the first time, which he held onto until Paris. But Indurain is not just a mountain climber, and he proved this in last year's tour with a spectacular victory on stage nine, a 65-kilometer time trial where he delivered a killer blow to his rivals, some of whom never recovered. Indurain averaged nearly 31 miles per hour and finished three minutes ahead of anyone else. It was the springboard from which he launched his second tour triumph, taking the yellow jersey in the Alps and keeping it all the way to Paris. This year's Tour de France begins on July the 3rd in the Vendée region. If Indurain is going to win an historic third successive title, he'll look to dominate stages 9 and 19, the time trials. His feats in winning two successive tours and now two successive Giros prompted Spain's number one newspaper, El País, to award Indurain the accolade of his country's greatest ever sportsman. Wherever he goes, he's now followed closely by photographers and autograph hunters. And it's true that the constant media attention is a side to cycling that Indurain would prefer to do without. Since last year's tour, Indurain has married his long-standing girlfriend, Marisa. 
But those closest to him say that fame and fortune, his salary last year is reported to be more than half a million dollars, have not changed the shy country boy. Indurain still prefers attending Sunday Mass to going out to bars and clubs. Miguel Indurain, the cyclist, is just one period in my life. But I think that in five or six years, I will have to give it up and do something else. Maybe farming. I don't know. But by then, I hope to have ended my career successfully and carry on with my life.